Hey, hey, viewers, it's week 22 on The Pagan Perspective. I'm Kara, your host for Tuesdays, and this week's topic is divination. So first on the list is the ancient Chinese form of oracle divination. And all I know about this is stuff that I've read, which is that it involves hexagrams and solid and broken lines, and it doesn't give you exact answers to your questions, but more tells you like sort of what path to seek the answers on, like what you should do to find your answers. And actually a friend of mine, when he heard that divination was this week, he said he would teach me how to read it someday. So perhaps I will learn, but right now I don't know much about it other than it's Chinese and it's one of the more popular versions of divination. Tea leaf readings I actually have played around with a little bit, and not just because it's in Harry Potter, but that might have had something to do with it, but I do know how to do tea leaf readings or coffee grounds readings. Different symbols mean different things. It means something different if it's in the middle of the cup or on the sides. It means something else if it's closer to the top here or closer to the bottom inside. And uh, there's just a lot of different stuff that can be found with tea leaf readings, but so you have to look up sort of what certain symbols mean if you care about that, or you can go based on what they make you feel. Dowsing is a really old method of divination where people would use like forked branches or something like that to find water. And the way you do that is by holding a stick, and again, I don't have anything to demonstrate these things properly, so I'll use a marker. But you would basically hold a stick, like, not very firmly so that it wouldn't move, but just hold it sort of gently in your hand, and then you would walk around slowly. And when they got to a part where there was water hidden underground, the stick would move, and of course I'm moving it now. The stick would move and dip down and point toward where the water would be. You can dowse with a pendulum too. If you use a pendulum over like a map of an area, you hold the pendulum over different parts of a map and then you would ask it if what you're looking for is in that area and it would tell you yes or no. That's also considered dowsing um, because you're locating a physical thing. But there's also the, the wire coat hanger thing where you would hold two wire coat hangers in your fingers and walk around slowly and when the coat hangers turn together and like cross that means you've reached an energy vortex. I think you can do that for water too but my family always did it for energy vortexes so like if you were looking for a spot where there was really high energy like that could be giving off good energy or that might be a problem area of energy like a void that's how we would find that. The human aura is considered a little bit divinatory because it does tell you things about the person and about their mood and about what's going on because you can read a person's aura to find out what's up and so it's not really telling the future or it could it could be telling you what's about to happen in their life or it could be telling you the past because if there was a past injury and you can see that in their aura that's sort of telling you about their past but mostly it's just telling you about something and so if you know how to read auras obviously that's how you would divine that way it's not really a special different thing it's just reading auras in general which you guys know I don't really do because I did a video on auras on my personal channel maybe I'll link to that too if you're interested in it Ouija boards I know exactly where you guys need to go for information on Ouija boards and I also need to because I have not checked out his channel but Ouija Freak it's his entire channel. It's just all about Ouija boards and I have never actually used a Ouija board because my mom had bad experiences with it and no, it wasn't like bursting into flames and like flying around the room or anything. It was different, okay, but still not a good experience. So I've never used a Ouija board. As you guys know, I use the spirit board with my pendulum, which again is at home, but I have a pendulum spirit board video. So I'll be linking to all of these videos so you guys can see more information on each of these things that I'm mentioning. Graphology is handwriting analysis, and I've always been intrigued by this, but I've never actually studied it. And one of my friends last year here at my college somehow was taking a class that was teaching her graphology, and so she had us all write a letter to her. So it started with dear, and then her name, and then within the course of the letter, she told us to lie 
about one thing. So we had to include a lie and then we had to sign it with our full name, like our signature. But she determined that one of our friends doesn't like his name and someone else was having anxiety issues and that apparently I'm good at lying because she didn't pick up the handwriting change when I lied. I said that I hated peanut butter and who loved peanut butter. So graphology is really, really cool, but I don't know anything really about it except in this little stupid book I had as a kid that told me, like, if you dot your I a certain way or if you cross the T toward the top or lower and whatever, if you're writing, like, leans to the right or left or if you, like, write across a page and it goes up, it means you're happy, and if it goes down, it means you're depressed, like, if you're not writing on lined paper. So, I don't know, but it's a way more precise science than that, believe me. Psychometry is just a crazy, crazy concept to me. I think it would be so cool to be a psychometrist, but psychometry is the ability to tell the history of an object, normally a small object, by holding it to your forehead. Like, people do that in TV shows all the time, and so I feel like, I don't know, I felt like it wasn't necessarily real, but I've definitely done that I've done that with crystals because it helps me focus on their energy by holding it to my forehead. I've never thought that you could actually like tell the entire history of an object by holding it to your forehead, but apparently psychometry is the name for that. And they say that it's not really something they, meaning the website that I'm going to link to, that, I'm, that I read all this stuff off of, says that psychometry is pretty much a gift that you're born with and if you have it you probably already know because you probably discovered it in childhood and it's not really something you can learn but I would love to learn that isn't that awesome my god monitions of approach I want to talk about this one because I didn't know what it meant when I saw it but monitions is when you see someone that you know but then you realize it wasn't them and then shortly after that person actually shows up and that happens to me all the darn time so I just thought that was worth mentioning apparently that's what it's called Charming Pixie Flora has a really nice video on it so I'll link to that video of course but basically geomancy is using earth like like a handful of dirt and like casting it out on a flat surface and interpreting the patterns from that. It's like tea leaf reading, but it's just with like dirt. You can do that with other objects too, like sticks or bones or I don't really know what else, but there's a different name for like each different thing that you use. But if you use earth for it, it's called geomancy. You may have noticed I have a palmistry poster. Palmistry is divination by reading the lines and mounds on the hand and this is actually the least detailed uh, source for palmistry that I own, but it's also the coolest looking because it's like old looking, it's like faded. But I think it's funny because it's showing the left hand and you're supposed to read whatever is your dominant hand and most people are right-handed, I think. Cartomancy is divination by cards. And the cool thing about cardomancy is that you can use a regular deck of cards for it. And Shazzy P. Bear actually has a video on cardomancy, which I will, again, link you to, and you should check that out because it has way more information than I could ever give you. However, if you are using tarot cards, the form of divination is called taromancy. My top five scrying favorites would be Pendulum scrying, smoke scrying, which was mostly used by Native Americans, flame scrying or pyromancy, which is actually using the flame of candles rather than the smoke rising from, say, a campfire, hydromancy, water, and then if it's a crystal ball, it's called crystallomancy, but I'm not sure if they consider it the same thing if it's just a mirrored surface. I know mirror scrying is using a mirror, but if it's just like a shiny surface, like a scrying wand made of crystal, I wonder if that's still crystallomancy. Scrying in the leaves of trees, I also really like, and it doesn't give a specific name for that, so if anyone knows a specific name for that, or you want to make one up, go for it. Divination, 
is serious business. Thank you for watching, and I know it was not really in-depth on anything, but I thought I'd at least start to show you how many different kinds of divination there are. And I will see you next week. Blessed be.